Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a wind restrictor on a C6 convertible. I'm happy to say that Wind Restrictor is sponsoring the Corvette channel and in doing so they've authorized me to be able to give you a 10% discount on everything that you see on their site. So I'm going to be posting a link and also a, a coupon code that you can use on their site or you can call into the customer service and order it that way and you'll be able to receive the 10% off. Now let me tell you about the, the product just a little bit. The, the product is a genuine licensed product from GM and they offer a whole bunch of different emblems and logos that you can put on it or, you can, or they can help you make a custom one. They not only make them for the Corvettes but they make them for other brands also. Uh, Chevrolet, Ford, uh, Mercedes, a whole bunch. So uh, check out their site. I'm sure that you'll really love what you see. So when I told Jennifer about this new wind restrictor, she was super excited about it. Yeah, I've always loved the looks of the convertible Corvettes, the, well, any Corvette really, but the convertibles, the coupes when the tops are off, but I never wanted to ride in them because by the time I got from point A to point B, I was a complete mess and didn't want to go in anywhere where we were going. So when he told me about the wind restrictor, I was super excited about this product. And then when they were able to customize it for us, it's just beautiful so I'm so excited to finally be able to ride with the top off and have feel the wind and not destroy me yeah well that was the thing that Jennifer just spoke about is that this thing not only looks great but it cuts down 50 percent of the airflow the air turbulence inside the car so you know she's not going to end up looking like you know a big puffball when she gets <laughs> where we're going and so for the first time I'm actually going to be able to drive my car with a top off. I've, it's always been something, you know, I've had a lot of different Corvettes over the years and I never get to take the top off unless I'm by myself. So, so I'm really excited about it myself. So today guys we're going to be installing a wind restrictor on, on my friend's C6 here today and we're going to be going step by step on how to do that. Um, there'll be, uh, I'll try to get the very best views that I can for you. Um, on how we go about doing it. This one happens to be an automatic top. Um, it's not any difference in the installation between a manual or an automatic top except for if you're not ready for it, the automatic, once the top is up, it's going to want to fold down on you after about four or five minutes. So be prepared for that and have something, uh, some sort of prop rod of something to be able to hold the top up so it doesn't close on you, okay? Um, as far as uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to go step by step with the instructions and uh, we'll just show you how it's completely done. Now as far as the wiring is concerned, today I'm going to be showing you just the basic installation of where you're going to pick up your ground and your, and your uh, positive wire um, because there are so many variations of this restrictor. Now this one is a multi-light kit. It has all of the all the different lights and colors, but you don't have to buy it that way. You can buy it without any lights at all, and you can buy it as a single light. So I'm in, what I'm going to be showing you is just where you tap into the power, and then that way when you, whatever kit you decide to get, you'd be sure and you follow the, the instruction manual that comes with that kit. So guys, real quick, just before we get started here, I want to make sure that you know that we're going to need to be able to move both seats all the way forward and fold them up. So we're going to be taking the seats all the way like that and moving the seat all the way forward to be able to give us a little more room in here because we're going to have to be pulling carpet back and we want to be able to give ourselves as much room as possible. You want to make sure that you have your, your tunnel cover up and that the, the roof the convertible part of it is up and out of your way so you can actually work in this compartment here. Now what we did is we took some string and we actually wrapped it around here because like I was telling you in the very beginning is that after about four or five minutes this top wants to relax and then at that point it's right here and it's closing on you so you can take the top you can fold it up a little bit and then you can tighten it off uh, 
the string going all the way from the handle all the way around. That holds it up and out of the way. You could get up a little piece of wood or something like that, but this way you're not actually hurting the top in any way. You're not taking a chance of scratching anything, and I just wanted to cover that before we get it, get going. <clears throat> now, what you need to do here, the first real step here, is that we've got four piece, uh, four screws that we've got to get uh, got to get out. And it's these two screws down here, right here and right here, and then there's two press pins that go into the waterfall. You got these little plastic rivets right here. You see right there that comes out. That's going to free this up so we can pull this free. Just like that. We're going to do that on the other side also. So at that point, we've got this little guy, and we can actually lay this down. Now, what you guys also can do here is if you are if you want to get this completely out of your way, there's a speaker plug that's actually located on the back side that you can actually disconnect the speakers. Now, I don't think I need to do that, but there's a plug on both sides, and I'll show you a graphic of what that looks like in a picture, and you would just need like a small... Uh, small screwdriver or something like that to build a wedge into the, the bracket or the, the socket so you can remove it and be able to just take this completely out. I don't think I need to do that. I think I can just lay this down like so. Okay, you can see the wire right here on both sides, um, but there's plenty of room here to work, so no sense in taking that loose. But you can do it if you'd like to. Now what we're going to be doing here is we've got to get ourselves uh, some clearance now that we have it so we can pull our carpet back so we can get our um, we can get our bracket onto the car now the other thing that we have to do is there's a, another small uh, hopefully you guys can see that I think you can there's another little uh, like rivet per se of a little, so press pin, plastic press pin that that has to come off in order to be able to take the seat belt cover off once we do that and we'll be able to pull the carpet back. We'll be able to get to the the uh, the actual spot where we're going to mount the brackets. Okay. So next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling this little plastic uh, rivet out of this hole so we can remove um, the seat belt cover. So guys, it'll take a little bit of doing to get these pins out. And I ended up using a screwdriver to get it a little bit freed up here. And then I followed it with a pair, uh, pair of cutters here that I was able to be able to pull it out. You want to be careful that you don't just try to reef this out because this plastic, you'll end up breaking it. So you, you just want to be very careful. Okay. So then at that point, I'm going to be able to lift this up and off. like so. There's another clip here. You can see this. Hopefully you can. There is a spring-loaded metal clip that's, uh, that's it's actually a plastic clip that's reinforced with metal. But that little guy just slides out of the slot. So, so when we go to put it back in, we're going to slide it in and then we'll be able to put our, our uh, actually our screw will go in into this spot rather than the rivet. Okay. We're going to pull that rivet out, and we're going to move this up and out of the way. Now, this exact same procedure is done on the other side also. So, um, so I'm going to be showing you how to pull this apart on this side. I'm not going to show you the other side um, because they're exactly the same. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the carpet back. It's like so. And then pull this carpet. Back like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the grab my other camera so I can show you what I'm seeing over here. So what we're gonna do here is that you can see that there's a there's a hole right here. Okay, you can see it right there hopefully. Let's see if I can get it with my other camera. 
So you can see there's two zert two openings there, top and bottom. You're going to use the top hole, okay? And and so that's included in the in the hardware package as well as the bolts and stuff that are included for the wind restrictor. So you don't want to lose them. Um, but they come with these uh, there it's a bolt, a nut, and then the little little bracket that goes into the the, the uh, tower. Now what you're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to go to the top hole, we're going to get it seated right here, and then we're going to tap it in with a hammer. Just like so. It goes in pretty easy. You can see right there like that. So I'm going to repeat that on the opposite side also. But now at this point what I can do is I can take this and I can unscrew it. That leaves the, that leaves the anchor in place. And I'm going to take the nut off of this screw because we're, gonna, we're not going to use this nut anymore. But I will end up using this screw. So we're going to hang on to that. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do it on the other side. And then we'll be right back. Alright. So now that, we've got, now that we've got our little mounting bracket uh, installed here. Now we can go and we can put our, our seatbelt cover back on to the car. Okay, so we're just going to snap that back in place. Just like so. Okay. And then it's going to line up, and it should line up exactly where this, where our bolt goes, which is where that original little rivet, the plastic rivet went in. As you can see right there, it's lining up just fine. So now that I've tested that and it works, now I'm going to take my bracket, right? And you want to make sure that the bracket for this side, the, the upper screws here are pointing toward the center of the car because that's what is going to marry with the wind restrictors bracket. And then it also has this little standoff, and the standoff actually goes into this slot right here um, on, on the cover. So your, your whole process here is to put this down. You have these little ears here on each side. Those are going to lock down onto the lip of this upper bracket. That's going to slide down. This little standoff is going to slide into this this little uh, slot here where we pulled that plastic rivet out of and then that at that point it's in there good and solid then we can take our screw and we can tighten it up okay so I'm gonna go go like that again about three quarters to an inch somewhere in that ballpark I think three quarters about almost dead on that you're going to stand off from there and let me see if I can get that for the with the GoPro See, so take a look at that. Somewhere about there is what we're looking for. And you can see that once this sits down in place, that that standoff is going to fit right there in that slot. So we're going to go ahead. This is a 5 16 nut here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that little guy in like that. And we're going to tighten this down. Now you don't want to over tight. It is going to get snug to your finger. And you're going to tighten it up with a nut driver or a screwdriver, or whatever you decide you have. But don't reef this down so tight because it will break the plastic. You, you want it nice and snug, but you don't want to just like totally crush it. Okay? There we go. Like that. All right, so that one is done. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump to the other side, do the exact same thing. And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll tap into the wiring. But now we've got to be able to get to the basic wiring. I pulled this carpet back here, and you can see that there's this little harness right here. It has about 25 wires or so in there. And the brown wire is your running light, running light wire, okay? Then there's a blue wire in there. So if you wanted to be able to run this as a, uh, as a, a third brake light, or with your third brake light, you would tie into the blue wire. Otherwise, you're going to tie into your brown wire, and then that way you'll have power when your lights are on on the car, okay? Now, there are other options of being able to in install this. You could run power to it 24 seven, uh, you know, constant control, constant power to the controller or uh, on a keyed switch. And you can go ahead and do that. And, and that 
Um, I'll leave up to you as far as where you find that power. Um, but uh, for our, our install, we're going to be utilizing the brown wire that we're going to use when the running lights are on. Okay, so um, the wind restrictor, if you again, like you, you have two wires coming off the wind restrictor on a, on a basic system, you're going to do one of those and it's going to go over to the ground. You're going to use one of these wires as the ground wire over here. Okay, you can see where I was using my test light there. There's your, your ground wire. And then we're going to tie into the brown wire here to be able to get the power. Now, again, like I was saying, if you have elected to get a uh, multi-light system and you want to change how the wiring is done, then um, go ahead and follow the instructions that come with that kit and it'll help you be able to figure out exactly how you're going to go ahead and power that. So now we've got our wires connected. Um, so now we've got power. Here's my new one restrictor that I just got. Please check out the link below and also mention the Corvette channel so you can get your 10% discount when you go to order yours. All right guys, this is the fun part that we've been waiting for after we got the brackets installed is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to insert the wind restrictor actually and mount it onto the brackets. Now, if you notice, the centerpiece is pointing forward. Now with the top up like it is like that, we're gonna have to tuck it down in like so, and you wanna be careful not to scratch your paint. Okay, but you're gonna tuck it in and you're gonna roll it and then that way you can get it onto the brackets. And then at that point, you're gonna go back to your hardware kit here and you're gonna go ahead and put a, a washer and a nut on each one of these bolts and then you'll be good to go. Put a washer on and a nut. Just like that, we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Now that we've got the restrictor installed, and got the bolts all tightened up, now if you've elected to go ahead and get a light kit or a multi-light kit, you would go ahead and install the light bar right there on the bottom and then run the wiring right down here and over to our, our wiring points that I've showed you already. Now we've got our light bar, as you can see here, I'm moving it up there so you can see it. And we're running our wiring out to the passenger side, which is where all of our wire is, okay? So now again, this is a multi-light system, so we have four wires, it's gonna go to a controller, but if you only have a single wire, then you would just have two wires here. So that's that's all you have to be doing, worried about there. Now, um, this is a T15 Torx that just tightens these little screws up right here and up here. Okay, and we're just going to put this up here onto the onto the plexiglass under the restrictor. Okay, it's like so. Try to get it centered as you, best you can and get it up all the way onto it, just like that. Okay, at that point, um, hopefully you guys can see this. I'm having to feel for this, but hopefully you can feel this. And you're just going to snug the screw up. You're not, you're not going to um, tighten it down super tight because you don't want to crack it. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere, so. It's just really just kind of pinching it place. Now at that point, you've just got this little bit of wire here. It's a little wire and it's gonna tuck down into the carpet and down and over here and out of the way, out of sight. Okay, so now what we've got left here is all we're doing is we're just tucking the carpet down. Now once we get this tucked back in, we're gonna tuck this down underneath and we're going to tuck around this bracket. Now, you may have to, and you'll see that in the instructions, you may have to cut a little T here to be able to, to uh, make this fit. Yeah. Um, you might be able to also um, fold it underneath. When I did it the other side, oh, I, I had yeah, to cut it just it a little bit. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this, this speaker module or this this plate here right over the, the nuts that were there that you'll see the the uh, screws where they went, okay? And then you take your your little uh, spin nut and you're just gonna tighten it down right there, just like that. 
Then I'm going to go to the other side. I'll be able to put that down. We'll follow it with the Torx. Torx screw. And it's the same for both sides again, guys. So as you, as you know, as you pulled it apart, you saw it was exact, exactly the same. All right, so now that we've got this in uh, here in place, we've got two things we've got to put on still. We've got our little press pin that's going to go into the center. Right over here into the into the center, we'll press and push it in. And then up here on our little cover, and we're just going to take our little take our little stand, our uh, little plastic rivet and push it down and get it locked in place. And then you're just going to repeat that for the other side. You want to make sure that this. The other side of this is up where it belongs. There's another snap up here. So now that we've got everything all put back together, we can go ahead. We've got uh, we've got power to the system. We're going to go ahead and we're going to test it, make sure it works. And there we go. So we are good to go on this one, guys. And that is how you do it. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative, and when it comes time that you want to put a wind restrictor in your C6 convertible, you'll know exactly how to do it. So guys, again, thank you for watching, and you have a great night.